Hi, I'm Eddie, fitness instructor at California Cycle Path in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Today, we want to discuss proper setup of the Concept 2 indoor rowing machine. We also want to go with a slow motion pick drill showing different motions where you start from on the rope or the erg when you start. Um, this is the erg, the Concept 2 rowing machine. I'm going to show you how to dismantle it into two pieces. There's the lock rail system that keeps the two pieces together. When we take this apart, we want to disengage the lock system. We want to bring the two pieces separate from one another, stand the steel rail up, set the erg to the floor, and that's you know how we can transport it safely. And if we're going to carry the actual flywheel, we want to grab on the front of the rail and towards the middle, and we can carry it and transport it safely without damage. We want to put it back together the groove on the steel rail will go back into the flywheel and we want to slowly lower the erg back down so that it locks in place. We want to be careful that our straps don't get caught into the locking system so that it locks flush and everything's back together. Now once we actually get to preparing to row, our rowing machine will step up onto the box. Now, first order is the, the performance monitor. We want to make sure that it's at eye level when we set up. And if there is someone, a client that's crunching, you want to stand it up nice and tall to encourage them to sit up straight. So I'm going to set my performance monitor at eye level. Then we have our damper setting, which controls what size of boat we would actually be rowing in. So we go from one to 10, one being the least, 10 being the highest setting. Usually with a client, we wanna go between a three and a five. Then once we get through our damper setting, our handles at the front of the rower, we wanna bring it from the position of starting to our handle hook so that we can reach once that we're engaged on, on the rower. Then once we get to the foot flexors, we want to measure basically where our foot's going to sit so that the strap is over the ball of the foot. So for me, I only have two, I, I get it to about a five, loosen the straps, feet in, and that'll get my feet to where it's safely across the balls of the feet. So I'm going to strap down tight, I'm going to grab my handles, my Damper setting is on it between a three and a five. So we're gonna start with our slow motion pit drill. So first, arms and back, we wanna keep the legs straight. We're gonna go from 11 to one. Back, arms come out, knee forward. Arms out, knee forward. We're pulling to the sternum, back out. Pushing our heels in, pushing our pulling, and we're going to go right into a quarter slide, which is just a slight bend of the knee and back. Quarter slide, which I'm almost all the way in. And we're going to our complete rowing stroke all the way in. So after our initial training in North Carolina, once we returned to Pittsburgh, I wanted to find a way to explain to clients the movement of the body once on the rower. So I used this crude spray painted board <laughs> with a marker to show the basic lean back and lean forward motion of 11 to one o'clock. 
we don't want to go any further. We're just leaning slightly back from 90 degrees, slightly forward. So I thought this would be entertaining to show the first part of our teaching process here at Cycle Path. So I'm going to set myself up on the rower, set my foot flexors to where the straps would be over the balls of my feet. I'm checking that my air is set properly. My performance monitors at eye level. So, we start to row. The first position I'm going to discuss is the finish. So once we're to here, arms are pulled to the abdomen, legs are fully extended, heels are pushed into the foot flexors, torso is leaning back slightly beyond 90 degrees. Our arms are going to come out first, and then lean slightly forward, slide in. Finish is the first part. Our recovery, extend the arms, lean forward from the hips, bend your knees, slide forward. The handle needs to pass over the knees before we slide forward. That's our recovery. So recovery and finish. The catch is when we're grasping the handle evenly, seat is slid forward, knees are bent, for the chest. And our drive. We're using the power of our legs. This is a push, not a pull. So our drive. Our heels are in, pushed in firmly. We extend the legs, we pull back. So we're going to put it all together. Finish, arms down, slide in. Remember those leans. Slightly forward, slightly back. 11 to 1. So, we do see a lot of common errors. And obviously, we've been learning through this process ourselves. One that we see often Lifting the handles over flex knees during the recovery. So, the hands press over the knees. I start to bend. The handles are here. And it's forcing us to lift over before we actually finish back into our recovery. So we don't want to see the knees come up first before the arms extend out. Another one we often see is bending the arms before the legs are moving to start the, to start the drive. So I would be, I'm bending the arms before I start my drive, which means I'm doing more of a pull than a push. So we need to make sure that we're keeping our eye on clients to correct these movements so that we're all rowing properly, drive the legs out of the box, arms are long, So we're going into the workout portion of this video. Um, basically, for my purposes, I teach early morning row. For example, Monday morning, 5 a.m. A lot of our clients, you know, we will have some clients that show up early, 20 minutes early, 15 minutes early. They get on the rower, they start their warm up. You know, typically then, if you had that kind of time, I would be able to set up on the performance monitor what actual workout we wanted to do. But I have some clients that show up right at 5 a.m. So at that point, I try to keep it simple and basic so that we can get our time block in so that we're not missing out on a workout of 45 minutes, especially with a lot of our clients that have to go to work right from the gym. I keep it very basic, so I'm gonna set myself up. I'm gonna pull my handles to the hook. I'm gonna get my feet into our flexors. I'm going to go to menu, and we're going to go to just row, the top, so I select workout, it's the second button down, new workout, single distance, and I basically keep it standard. I'm gonna go with the 2,000 meter row, and I'm gonna go ahead and hit the check box or the enter button. So at the top, we have our 2,000 meters. I'm gonna start at my catch. So as soon as I start to pull, the meters are gonna to start to back down. Now, I start with the low intensity at first. We go with 30 seconds to a minute of a warm up. So I'm gonna start into that. And I do prompts while I'm teaching, so I don't expect my class to keep track of their own time. So as we're warming up, I'm not driving really hard. I want to get into this 30 second warm up. And as I'm going, my meters are coming back. So I'm into 30 seconds, so I'm going to 
heels in, and I'm going to drive. Catch, drive, finish, and recover. And as I've said, the meters are coming back. I basically keep it out a minute. more seconds here. Five more seconds. And then we back it off. Light intensity, lower the heart rate. So we have 10 seconds to go. We're going to go back into that drive. In three, two, one. Start our drive once again. Catch, drive, finish, recover. Trying to maintain the same intensity as I go into these minute blocks. So on my drive, right now I'm at about 34 strokes per minute. And that doesn't necessarily indicate the intensity of our workout. It's giving us a gauge how many slides I have on the monorail. Five more seconds. Three, two, and one. Slow it down. So at this stage, I would ask my clients to add a little bit more time to that drive, where we're intense and we're moving, get a little bit longer of a break, we go for 60 seconds, and then once we go back in, up to a minute 30. So we're kind of working up a ladder, we're at the halfway point now. seconds. Ten seconds. Three, two, and one. Thirty seconds in, minute to go.
more seconds. Fifteen more seconds. Back it off. Sixty second rest, and then our final push. And there are times where you'll get out of proper form with pulling, with, I'm sorry, with the push on our drive. We get to intense movement. The flywheel is still moving quickly. You'll get out of sync with your form. Just slow it down. Get yourself back in sync. Back out. So our final, final drives coming up. seconds. You go back down to a minute. Three, two, and one. Goes in, drop. Four, three, two, and one. And then our final recovery phase. As I said, my flywheel is still kind of moving quickly. I'm going to get back in sync with my form. Here we go. Back. Out. If only I had my crew drawing to show you as I'm up here, but I don't. In the middle portion of our video. 11 to 1. So we're almost through our recovery phase. And for the purposes of this video, it's a lot shorter. So the end will end. And since this is new to our gym, from time to time, we're still getting a lot of new clients to rowing. So a lot of the times, keeping it simple is much better as an instructor so that I can cue form and I'm not concerning them with trying to learn the monitor right away. Keep it very simple on how we set up, we get moving, and then as I catch things, I can talk them through the proper portions of their form. Okay, once we get done, we're stretched out, we wanna take and take care of our herbs by cleaning them up. So we're gonna wipe the rail first because they do get dust on the rail and then the roll will spread and it'll create black marks along our monorail. And we want to avoid that because any kind of bumps in our row makes it extremely unpleasant and damages our equipment. So we'll wipe down our hand, the handles here. Again, we don't want to wipe off the monitors. We don't want to get any kind of moisture on them. So we kind of leave them as they are. We want to get our damper down to one, 
I usually fold the monitors back and we do keep them assembled at cycle path because this room basically is focused on rowing on a daily basis. So, but if we wanted to store them along the wall, we would fold them, unlocking the mechanism, lifting them up nice and slow, making sure the seat's back first so that we don't have it clang like in the first part of my video. Just thought I'd point that out. Stand them up, push them against the wall, or we also slide them together by using the wheels. So usually I will pick them up and slowly roll them next to one another without bumping the handles into the flywheels and we keep them condensed if we need to use this room for other fitness purposes. So thank you. I hope that you enjoyed our videos. Thanks.